Climb is a coding agent. So we talked about Quad Code. This is a similar tool, not produced by any like forefront lab, but it's a free tool, it's open source, and it will write code for you across an entire project. So it's not copy and pasting. It's actually like a coder that's working in your code environment. So I use VS Code, really like VS Code. And so I'm gonna pull it up there and we're gonna just create an app here and I'll show you how it works. So open up VS Code here. And what I wanna demonstrate is, and just as like a quick aside, most models, if you're using ChatGPT or Quad or whatever, you can say, hey, create me like a little snake game that'll run in the browser and then you can open it up. And, and so most models will do this. The thing that's gonna make Klein impressive and all these coding agents really impressive is that it can take a lot of steps and read the files that you already have in your project to say, okay, what utilities are available for me to use? Where can I use, make use of code that's already written? And then it's also got access to you know, the internet and some libraries of tools people make for agents. So it's really, really much more powerful than just like copying and pasting code. So we'll see a little demo here. So I'm gonna say, write a simple web app I can use to know, oops, know when to water my plants. Okay. And then uh, you don't have to watch me type. I'll copy and paste the rest of this. Essentially what I'm gonna ask for here is a kind of a plant watering calendar or you know system that should be able to, I, I need to be able to make new plants and set how many days between waterings for those plants. I should be able to see those in a list that shows me when they need to be watered next. I want some highlighting to say if it's due today, it's blue. If I forgot to water it, it should be red. And then I wanna be able to indicate when I watered the plant so it knows. And then I want a page for each plant that shows a log of when it was watered. And then I also wanna be able to manually set the date for when a plant was last watered. And then I gotta be able to delete the plants if I don't have them anymore. Or if they died, so a lot of my plants died switch it to planning mode. You'll see this little toggle, plan and act. I can switch it to planning mode and it'll tell me what it's gonna do. So this is a pretty simple app, but not that simple. This is gonna require, you know, multiple different UI elements, an ability to keep track of data. It's gotta have like certain functionality and buttons that actually do things when I click them. So we're going to send, you can see right away, I've got API cost tracker here and then a context window that's showing me how long, like basically how much of the AI's memory have I consumed. When it gets to 200K, it's gotta start forgetting things to continue working. So just planning this out took 15K tokens, probably something like, you know, 12,000 words, something like that. It seems like a lot, but a lot of that was thinking, which you, you wouldn't directly see here. So this is giving me a good plan here. It's telling me what stack it's gonna use, basic HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript. It's showing me the data structure. So for each plant, I need, I've need i got an ID, a name, watering interval. Here are the UI components, main page, edit, and, and plant detail, and then some core functionality. So anyways, I can review this and see the files that it wants to create. And then if I like it, I can just switch it to act mode. So while it's, doing this it's going to basically over here tell me what it's going to do and then you'll see some files start to get loaded uh, you can choose what you want to auto approve so you can have it auto read files auto edit files so i've got both of those clicks so it's just going to keep going and then you can give it permission to execute commands use the browser use mcp servers this is a uh anthropics you know be, people can write tools that ai can use and then expose those through those servers. So anyways, I've given it approval to read and edit files, but the rest I'm gonna have to give it permission for. So, all right, what's happened since I started talking? We've got a detail and an index.html page here. I'll go back to the client interface and it's asking to make a folder. And so I'm gonna say, that's okay, run command. You'll see it open up a terminal here, makes a folder. 
And now it's putting my styles, my CSS here. And we'll just let it keep cooking. While it's doing that, I will like, small aside, I'm not the most advanced coder out there and kind of find my way around and stumble through projects. But this feels like magic <laughs> to me. <laughs> and it's very, you know, it's exciting to use and kind of wild, but. All right, so it's created my styles and it's asking to now make a JavaScript directory. I'm okay with that. And that's telling me what this code is going to do. I can review this. It can also, we're starting from scratch, but if you pulled this into a project you're already working on, it'll go read the files that exist so that it can better, you know, when, know when, what methods to reference and that kind of thing. And then it could edit files. If it were to edit, you'd see the old code here and the new code, and then be able to see what's changed highlighted in green. Very similar to just if you've used GitHub or pulled up a diff of a file for and after same interface or, or experience. All right, so this is working on the logic portion, the JavaScript, and we should be getting close to done here. Looks like we've got in the project, we've got our styles and then our JavaScript here for the detail page, the list page, and then how the storage works. And then two like UI components, HTML pages. All right, so then a final app.js file, which will kind of just run the program. All right, so this is wild. This is asking to use the browser. So I could just open up one of these HTML files and then go look at it in my browser. We may do that in a second. What it's saying is I can use a browser and demo the functionality here. So let's approve this and I'm gonna blow this up a little bit so it gets bigger. So it's now opened up its own browser and it's got its own little cursor that it'll move around. So I don't have any plants yet. Um, oops, let's keep this browser in the view here. Looks like it's gonna push add new plant button. Snake plant, it's a classic, hard to kill, cleans the air. Those are the two facts I know about snake plants. Correct watering interval, by the way, line for the win every two weeks. And now it's saying it needs water in three days. Got a nice little list here. Marked it as watered. I believe there was a click there. And then I'm assuming we'll see a detail page. Got some details. Likely we'll scroll down. Yep, you can see it was watered today. Very exciting. Also added, probably looks like the ability to add some notes to the watering. That's cool. And this is taking a minute. I think you get, uh, you get it. You can see a demo in the browser. So it's really cool. Just to go a little bit faster, I'm gonna open up this. Yeah, here we go. All right, so we saw this. I'm gonna add another plant. Also have a ficus and that. I water every seven days. And if I open up the details here. Can I edit? Yeah, so let's set the last water date to be a week ago. And then what we would expect is that on my plants page, yep, I've got a little blue highlight indicating this is due today our water due in six days. So let's edit this so to make it so the last time I watered it was a week and one day ago. Save that, go back to plants, I've got overdue. So it's very cool, it's very exciting. Let's just delete this to close the loop here and make sure that's possible. Very cool what's, what's possible. Let's take a really quick look at the code. 
jump back into VS Code for just a second. And we kind of went through all the files that it already created. This is pretty simple, right? No, no like super advanced senior software engineer level coding happening here. So, you know, developers absolutely still, and, and I will say I've used it on some more complex projects. You got to watch it and it can make mistakes. And those mistakes can be costly in terms of time to wind back. So this isn't like this demo makes it look like it can just do anything. There's a level of complexity that's not too far beyond what we did today where it starts to struggle, but it can save you a lot of time and, and just speed up the rate at which you're writing code and, and writing tests and those kind of things, the things that don't require quite as much thinking can go a lot faster. So that is Klein. There is, it will at the end of all of this, yeah, give me a nice little green text. Uh, I just called it green text, but that's not what it is. It is green. It's a, you know, summary of what happened. Here's the features. Here's how we did it. These are the files. And then you can see new changes and it'll open up in across all the files. Show me all the changes so I can see my HTML. And I can say, great. And it's saying, why don't you run this open command? I'm just going to click reject because I already did that. And then it'll say, all right, we're done. So task completed. Very, very, very cool, interesting tool. I'm excited because it allows me to build things uh, that I frankly don't didn't know how to before, and that's exciting. Uh, I legit have a hard time remembering when to water my plants. So there are some apps out there that cost money, and part of me is like, I'm just gonna build one. And I think I, things I would add to this is maybe a, a proper database to store these plants and things, but. We're very close to something I could now use. Very exciting.